Okay, so, here's part 2 tracking. Yes, I did just open up a new Blender thing. This is because I want to open up a model. So, I'm gonna go over to... Open... Try and find this model, if I can remember it. Um, where's my house? There we go. This model wasn't intentionally used for a college project, it was more for a... It was more for home use. Anyway, so we have our model, which is textured and looked... He looks nice. Very nice. So, one, one thing I'd like to add before is I do not own this model, I got it from BlendSwap from Animaniac888 I believe anyway thank you to him for making this model available and I think that's that bit cleared up anyway, tracking so what we want to do now is we want to go over to here movie clip editor click open now we want to find where we saved our clips. So I'm going to quickly find wherever that went. Okay, I'll just use the um, I'll just use the um, things I've got already. Smile model, tracking, um, view, view shop, five. So, open clip. Don't worry about um, the. Okay, so now what? Something else we want to do. Well, find where our clip ends. About six. One, six. Oh, that's easy. 160. So now we notice as we're dragging our marker across, we have see some of it's turned lighter purple while some of it's still darker purple. This is because it needs something called cache. I'm not entirely sure on what it does, but it's kind of important because it helps Blender go through it faster. So if you go through it for a certain amount of time, and then some of it will start turning dark purple again. But because my clip is so short, then I don't need it. Cool. But if you did need to change it, because some of it was going back, what you need to do is you need to go up to here to Blender User Preferences, System, Memory Case Limit, and then turn it up to as high as it goes. For me, I don't know how high it actually goes, because it doesn't seem to have a limit. So I'm going to Okay. So I'm going to leave that as it is because I don't need to change it. So we have our footage here nicely. Now what we need to do is to track it. So what we're gonna do is we need to add markers to this scene so that Blender can have an idea of what the camera is doing. And we need about eight of these minimum. I'd suggest going for about 8 or 10. As long as you can get some kind of pattern going, either a circle or a square rough pattern, then it's easier for Blender to figure out what the camera's doing. So, let's do this. So, I'm going to pick here. So, let's add the little thing. Go. Right. Now, it's important to find high contrast areas. Because if you want to track something here, then it's going to get lost and fine. It's going to go all over here and it's going to end up a mess. So if you can find something like this, like a door corner or something, that'd be handy. So now we've got our tracking marker set up. We want to go over here to track forward where Blender can find the clip. Now the reason we have that red line there is because we have pa pa here. 
path enabled in display. So I, d I don't want that because I find that distracting. So now we have our marker that should follow exactly where that point goes. That's nice. So now we need to do that another seven times. So I'm going to choose this other corner. And I'm now going to talk gibberish to you while I'm doing this to keep myself amused. Uh, so, um, like I said, I will put a link in the description or somewhere or the, so you can see how this whole project actually did turn out. Sorry, um, I, if you could start all your key, start all your tracking points on the same keyframe, then that does help as well. It's just something weird that Blender does. So the um, it's actually funny how we came up with the idea for um, this project, because we had. What we had to do is it was for college, and we had to make an advert for them. So what we did here, was, we had to raise awareness of a certain issue that someone might have with going to a new place like college or something, and addressing it in a viral advert. So we thought, my well my group thought, sorry correction I thought what would be an appropriate way of showing uh, so my idea was well is this place right for me because we don't choose a college just on the course we want to see if the college is right for us sort of thing so I wanted to address that somehow so I thought well how can I address that the college is well suited to practically everyone so I decided to put a dinosaur in there, like you do. And by that point, I'd only just sort of figured out how to do all this stuff, so I was confident that I could do it. I just didn't know how well it was going to turn out. It turned out all right, actually. Okay, so I got one, two, three, four, five, six. I think that's six, and two more. Um, I'm going to pick this dancing dude here. So the bigger your tracking points, the longer it does take to track it. So I got that. Uh, one more. I'm gonna go with um, that door corner here, just because. I'm sorry for hearing any screaming in the background. That's um, my sister having fun in the pool. Yes, I'm an unsociable bastard. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight tracking points. So now if we play through it, they all follow their respective tracking points nicely. Something else I like to do, just to be sure, is I'd like to turn off, go to this little eye thing. If you're using a different ver version of Blender, it might be under mute footage or something like that, but. Anyway, you want to mute, mute your footage, and you want to play through again, and see if your tracking markers make any sense to you, which it does for me. It's all good. So what we want to do now is, we want to go over to here, to the tracking panel, go over to solve, um, set your keyframes for how long your scene is. It is supposed to be for where the most shake is, which would be here. But I like to set it for the entire thing because this entire scene is pretty damn shaky. So we want to solve camera motion. Uh, solve error. Now this is important here, this little number here. Because it determines how well Blender thinks it tracked so 0.5827 that's quite good actually anything three or above is normally some sort of a problem somewhere but lower it is the the lower the, this figure is the better your track is practically um, I might actually quickly just add in another one see if that helps Go 
have to keep from one. Where would the other start? There we go. And track forward. If it goes through like this, then it means your f your tracking marker is a good one. So if you if you put one here, for example, I'm going to do this on purpose for a bad example, then it will, like I said, get lost. It will go all over the place, as you can see there. So you need to find high contrast places. How you can tell if you've got a bad track, well, a not so good track, is if it stops halfway through. It sort of stops, you can't find it. Might be something to do with the footage, or it might be something to do with the tracker, or it just might be Blender being weird. But you need to correct that, move, move it back, and then carry on. So I think that's that done. Click solve again. Select all the markers. It's an important thing to do. See, so yeah, that's in, that's improved my score. So it seeing it's below 0.5. I'm going to leave it as it is. So now what you want to do is go to set up tracking scene. A 3D view. View from camera. So now we can see that a dinosaur is in uh, it's that a camera moves, but our footage is not in the background like we want. So that's an easy fix. Just press N. Background image add movie clip there we go that should be it so I turn the opacity up to 100 yeah. so we have our camera moving along with the scene so now it doesn't quite match up at the moment but if you join me for part three then I will go through what to do